Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content I've got for you today is Glenn Beck on his show. He actually went into the ATF's most recent actions around defining who is a gun dealer or not. In fact, he's, he brought some things up that I think you guys need to see because this is a very interesting perspective. I've always been a fan of Glenn Beck's show. I've always liked the way he presents information. And if you happen to be affiliated with that, I'd love to be on. Call me. Anyway, everything will be linked in the description box below. And we're going to walk through this because he lays some stuff out here, which I think you guys need to see. Now, of course, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. We are distributing freedom twice daily, and we'd love to have you along for the ride. All right, my brothers and sisters. So as I mentioned, Glenn Beck is addressing the ATF issue about who is and who's not a dealer by redefining the dealership terms. This is something big, and the reason that I like to hit this is, as I mentioned earlier, I appreciate his takes on a lot of things. But also, this is starting to permeate outside of gun rights advocate circles. This is starting to go broader stream. That's why I like this a lot. But check this out. This is the first clip, and I want to bring something up that he brings in here after this. Check this out. So if, if I have a gun to sell, and I'm not a gun, you know, a gun store, I don't have my license, my FFL, uh, I can sell my gun, but it's a private transaction between two people, okay? Well, you now have to prove that you're not in business looking for profit on your gun. Now, now hang on, <laughs> hang on just a second. Um, I'm a, I'm a capitalist, okay, uh, and I'm looking for profit. I, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I think pretty much everybody, when you go to work, how dare you look for profit when you're at work? <laughs> I mean, that's why we go. Yes. Okay? If I have a gun and it's worth more than I paid for and I can find somebody that wants to pay for that gun, bro, okay. What I love about what he just brought in there is he simplifies it. And that's the important piece, simplifying this down to everyday per, everyday person. Because if, if, like he said, let's say you had an M1 carbine that your grandfather handed down to you. Like, in my case, I do. So let's just say you have an M1 carbine and someone says, hey, that was zero cost to you. I will give you $1,200 for it on the spot because I like that platform so much. It reminds me of my days in the Army. This is a real story, by the way. This actually happened to me. That's $1,200 that I could have come up with and given that gun away because someone else valued it. It's basic capitalism. Now, I didn't do it, but had I, according to these new rules of the ATF, I would be a gun dealer at that point. That's the entire point. You make a profit on something, you're now in the business because businesses make profit. Now, one of the things that he brings in in this entire clip, because the entire clip's 13 minutes long, I've got a few snippets for you. One of the things he brings in as an example is housing. And this is a really solid take. And I bet you this will happen to fulfill in some lawsuits going down the road as this gets implemented and as it continues and the final rule comes out. If you sell a house for a profit and it's by owner, are you all of a sudden a realtor? No. Why wouldn't you? Why would you be? You're selling something that is yours as an asset to someone else for cash. It is now their asset. A gun is literally the exact same thing. The only difference is they are now redefining who is a business person and who is in the business of selling firearms if you make a profit. Apply this exact same standard to housing or real estate. And if you sell <clears throat> a car, a house, anything that is yours, you make $1 profit on that boy, bad boy through appreciation, you're now a realtor and you're now a car dealership. That's the level of silliness that we're dealing with here. But I continue because now we got to get into something else he said. He really hit on some good points here, and I, I look forward to hearing what you guys think in the comments. Well, because obviously like a, a gun might depreciate after you buy uh -huh. it, right? So do you uh -huh. have to figure out what the – like? Well, that uh, sounds like you'd be a business. I mean, right. honestly, yeah, that's much more business like, like. You know, I'm like, I, I don't know. I mean, I looked on the internet. It's probably you could get one for about this price. Uh, you know, I'll sell it to you for a little bit less or a little bit more. That That's what the average person would do. But if I have to go, well, now, wait a minute, let's really look into it. Doesn't that make me more of a business? Seems like it. Seems like it. Seems like it. Okay. So that's such a valid point. 
So now when you're buying or selling a gun, you have to take into account appreciation or depreciation. Hey, here's another fun thought. Since we're now dealing with this as a business, can we now write off losses from gun sales? So for example, if a Glock would go for 400 and I sold it for 300 because I didn't want to make a profit, can I write off a $100 loss as depreciation on my taxes? Well, look at that. We might mean we are a business. Let's continue. I got one more thing for you. But the main crux of the issue here is all of these things, and it's being zoomed out to assets. This is where it will fall apart. It's all about assets. It's not about background checks. It's not about firearm dealers. It's about assets and property and exchanging it for goods or services or money. That's the entire point. They are going an in run, in run behind the entire system. Now, this last one is where he just comes out and he finally says it because we've all been saying it for years, but it's kind of good to get some affirmation from, from Glenn. Check this out. So here's, here's what they have to do now. To be able to enforce this, they have to have a gun registry. And the ATF has started a federal gun registry. Can't do that. Congress has been against that since 1791. It's constantly, constantly in the news. They don't care. This is why you have Congress, you have the presidency, and the Supreme Court. That's perfect. We have a separation of powers to keep each one of them outside of each other's pockets. That's the entire point. Now, he goes on here, and I couldn't do the entire clip because it was a pretty long clip. He goes down to, to I don't want to say mirror something that I've said because that's not, I don't own that. But he's going down the same road of something that I'm very fond of saying is you've got an usurpation of congressional responsibility handed out to executive bureaucracies. They get to do whatever they want because Congress says we don't want to deal with this because we want to get reelected. And he goes into this a lo much longer length and detail. But the entire point here is if you zoom this out, this is highlighting yet again to the exact same problem that we have in this country. Whether you are in the EPA or in the energy industry, you got to deal with the EPA. The gun industry, you got to deal with the ATF. Whether you are just an everyday citizen having to deal with either the FBI, the, well, not the CIA, that would be a little extreme, but all the CDC, all of these organizations that are outstepping their bounds, the entire point is Congress is not doing their duty. They're not doing their due diligence. And it's gotten to the point now where you sell a gun for a profit, you're a gun dealer. You sell a house by owner for yourself, you're not a realtor. You sell a car for profit because you flipped it, well, you're not a car dealership. What's the difference? And like I said, I'm glad to see more mainstream, broader, bigger audiences picking up this concept. But also, why is this allowed to stand only against gun owners and gun sellers and everything around that because that is where we're going to end up when you start to see the lawsuits coming down and i don't know which group's going to do it first but that's a big piece of it anyway that's what i've got for you guys let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll see you on the next one i'm Braden. see you later